In my last video, I talked to you about the iPad Pro and why I use it for most of my photography and video editing work. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use the iPad, which apps I use, and what my workflow is. So let's get started. I'm now going to show you my workflow for getting photos off an SD card or any other kind of external storage into my iPad and into Lightroom for editing. A few things to note before we get started. The first thing is that Lightroom on the iPad is Lightroom CC. If you're using Lightroom Classic, Lightroom CC is a different version of Lightroom that does not have the full function of Lightroom Classic. It's also a cloud-based product. It has a different user interface, a better user interface, and you will want to take a look and figure out whether or not uh, you're ready to move to Lightroom CC uh, if you want to take advantage of the iPad. Uh, personally, I find Lightroom CC fantastic and I'm very happy with it. Uh, yes, it has some, some functions that are missing right now that I uh, may have to uh, go back and uh, use Lightroom Classic for, but that very rarely happens. It's mostly batch functions and things like watermarking but for the most part, I spend 99.9% .9 of my time in Lightroom uh, CC for editing. The second thing to note is that on this iPad, I'm running iOS 13.1, the beta of iOS 13.1, which for all intents and purposes is iOS 13, which will be released, we expect, uh, by Apple in about two weeks in mid-September. If you're running iOS 12, there are some differences between iOS 12 and iOS 13, and I'll note those in terms of how they affect this workflow as, as I'm going through the demo. Uh, the other thing I should mention is that you may have heard of iPad OS. iPad OS is just part of iOS 13. It's a version of iOS that runs especially on, on the iPad. One of the things that's, that's uh, new in iOS 13, which has been uh, long awaited, is the ability to plug in and access external storage devices like uh, external hard disks and SSD drives. You can not only read from them, but you can write to them, and that, that's uh, fantastic. Uh, let me see, two, two more things. One is that uh, I've I, I mentioned SD cards a number of times, but if you uh, need to access uh, CF cards or some other kind of card, it's no problem at all. You just need to find a way to plug it into the iPad and generally, uh, you can either plug it directly into the iPad using uh, a reader that has a USB-C port if you're using an iPad Pro or if you're using one of the, old pad, the older iPads, uh, a reader that has a lightning port on it. Or if you're using an iPad Pro, you use a hub that has a USB-C connection into the iPad and then on the hub it has some ports, for example, such as a USB-A port. Uh, into which you can plug your, let's say, a CF card reader with a USB-A plug in it. And finally, uh, before we get going, we're almost there, uh, when I uh, read from the SD card here as part of the demo, I need to unplug the microphone because that is uh, plugged into the USB-C port. So I'll need to switch over to the microphone on the iPad temporarily. So I'm going to do that right now and I'm plugging in the SD card reader, which uh, is actually the standard Apple one. Uh, and in my case, it has a USB-C port on it. One thing that's really nice about it is that it supports UHS-2, and I'm using UHS-2 cards uh, in most cases, so it takes advantage of the extra speed of the UHS-2. Now, if I was running iOS 12, at this stage, the Apple Photos app would have popped up. Now, I'm going to go there manually, and in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see there's a little import tab that just appeared. And if I was in iOS 12, it would have gone there straight away. So what I'm seeing here is images that were taken with the Sony a7R 3 And uh, they are 42 megapixel images. Now I could just choose to import all of them. I won't do that just uh, for the purposes of time, but I want to import a decent number to show you how fast it is. Instead, I'll just select a bunch 98. All right, so let's import those. 
Now, as these are importing, one thing to note, again, with respect to iOS 12 versus iOS 13. In iOS 12, you have to import images into Lightroom via the Apple Photos app. That's why when you plug in the SD card reader on iOS 12, the Apple Photos app comes up automatically. There's no other way to read from the card except through that app. In iOS 13, you won't have to do that. We are expecting that Adobe will update Lightroom to then allow you, once iOS 13 is released, to read into Lightroom directly from the SD card or whatever card reader you're using. This could save you the step of not using the Apple Photos app. However, what I'm showing you is the workflow using the Apple Photos app. I've actually become rather fond of uh, the way I'm using it as a sort of an intermediate way to get the stuff into Lightroom. So I'm not sure when uh, iOS 13 is released and Adobe updates Lightroom to, to read directly from the card, whether I'll change my workflow. But uh, for now, it works quite well this way. So you just saw it, it very quickly imported 100 files and it gives me an option now if I want to keep those files on the SD card or delete them, I'm going to keep them. Uh, I'm going to also now import from a different SD card that is a UHS-1 card with 20 megapixel files that were taken by the Sony RX100 Mark 7. And you'll notice, because it's a UHS-1 card, how much slower it is reading the previews off the card. I'm going to just select uh, maybe 42 of those. Now, although it's slow to read the previews off, notice how fast when I go to import them. still pretty quick because they're much smaller images than the 42 megapixel images that we imported earlier. Okay, so we're going to keep those. I'm now going to unplug the SD card reader and plug the microphone in again. So now what you see is all the images that we just imported. The reason I like to use the Apple Photos app is I use it as a bit of a, uh, a way to filter the images. Now I could have also done that uh, using looking at the smaller previews uh, when we were importing the images off the SD card, uh, but what's great is that when they're in the Apple Photos app I can look at them in full screen here, right? And what I do is I select the ones that I want uh, to import into Lightroom by using the little heart icon in the top right hand corner here to favorite them. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to quickly favorite a bunch of these. Obviously, I would normally be taking a lot more care to look at each of these and see whether the, I like the composition and whether they're in focus and, and so forth. And I took a lot of images here the other day just so I could show you for the purposes of this demonstration. Okay, so I'm not sure how many it is, but I'm going to go to Lightroom now. Uh, and actually, you'll see in here, I already imported some of these before for the purposes of the demo. I'm just going to delete all these. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is import the images that we just favorited in Apple Photos into Lightroom. So I go to this option down below here to add photos into this album. By the way, what we're expecting once iOS 13 is released and Adobe updates Lightroom to let you read images into Lightroom directly from your card, a card reader, is that you'll be able to do that here. For now, I'm going to go to the camera roll and I'm going to select favorites. And you'll see that there are 31 images in there and I'm going to select all of them and Watch how fast they come in. And in fact, as they start coming in, uh, I can go in and I can just start editing straight away. But look, it's still, it's about half done now, 15. And it's going to be done shortly. But as I mentioned, and as I just showed you, while it's pulling these in from the Apple Photos app, you can automatically, you can already start going in and, and editing the images. and. Look how quickly the images render as you as you flip through them. It's so fast and responsive, right? And the editing is very quick. So that is 
for the most part, how you get the images into Lightroom. Well, and I say for the most part because there's one other thing that I want to show you that's important, and that is that if you are bringing the images in through the Apple Photos app, which you have to do right now in iOS 12, and uh, even, in fact, even with iOS 13 in beta right now, you still have to do it, but once iOS 13 is released and Adobe updates Lightroom, we're expecting you won't have to do that. Once you have the stuff in Lightroom that you want, the images that you want to keep and you want to edit, you need to go to the images that are in the Apple Photos app and delete them because you don't need them here anymore. And in fact, uh, let's just say that you had you had pulled in 100 images into the Apple Photos app and then you pulled those same 100 images into Lightroom. You've got two copies of them now. And in fact, they're going to get synced to the Adobe Cloud through Lightroom and through to the Apple Cloud through the Apple Photos app. So we don't need them here. So what we're going to do is select all the images that we imported and delete them. Now, the one thing that's important to note is that once you've deleted them, they're not actually completely deleted. It's possible to get them back. If you go to albums and scroll down the bottom, you'll see a recently deleted album. And you'll see that I actually have a large number of deleted images in there. So the images that you delete all go in here and they stay in here for 30 days. And that's good because it means that even if you delete the images off the SD card, they are in this folder, even if you've deleted them from the Apple Photos app. If you decide that you need an image that you missed the first time around, you can always come back in here and recover it. The thing to note, however, is that if you are importing a huge number of images, uh, like let's say thousands of images, and you're doing that every day uh, continuously, and you don't have a lot of storage on your iPad, you may end up running out of space because you may end up with 10, 20,000 images in this recently deleted folder. For that reason, you might want to go in here and select a bunch of these, which I'm going to do now just as a demonstration, to permanently delete them and reclaim the space if you're sure that you won't possibly need to get, get at them. Now, the one thing just to mention here is that when you delete thousands and thousands of images in here, what I've found in the past, at least on iOS 12, uh, and even in the earlier betas of iOS 13, it would take quite a while if you were deleting, say, 5,000 images. The other thing was that if you didn't stay in the foreground, if you didn't keep this view in the foreground, the operation would get interrupted and uh, would never complete. Now, I've noticed lately, like you'll just see I deleted 154 images there permanently from this recently deleted folder. It seems to be much faster at deleting now. So it's possible that, uh, that all the issues have been fixed uh, with this. But there you have it. That is the process of importing images from a external storage. And if you're using iOS 13, uh, that external storage could also be a hard disk or an SSD or anything else that you can attach uh, to your iPad. Getting them into Lightroom, in this case via the Apple Photos app. And as you can see, it's very fast and responsive, uh, both the importing process as well as the editing process uh, in Lightroom. I'm now going to show you my workflow for getting video files off an SD card and onto the iPad and into a fantastic video editing app. As was the case before, when I do the import, I will have to switch to the internal mic on the iPad. The process for importing here is different than when we imported still images uh, before. And the reason for that is, at least with the Sony cameras, the Apple Photos app does not know where to find the video files. So we have to use the Files app, which I've just pulled up here. And I'll now unplug the mic. I'm plugging in the SD card. On the left-hand side of the app here, you will have just seen a untitled item appear. 
I'm going in there and at least with the MP4 files that are recorded by the Sony cameras, or at least certainly the RX100 uh, that I recorded these with, uh, the MP4 files are in the private folder and then in M4 root and then in clip. I'm just going to select two here. One is 167 megabytes and the other one is 1.41 gigabytes. And you just select the files you want and then you pop up the share option here and you go to save videos. And if we go to the photos app now, we will see, well, already one appeared. That was 28 seconds, that one. And then the other one is uh, still importing it slightly longer. But even while that's happening, what I can show you is the LumaFusion app. So LumaFusion is this absolutely fantastic video editing app that allows you to get some pretty sophisticated results, uh, professional looking videos. Now that said, it's not Premiere Pro or Final Cut and that's great in a way because it's actually far easier to use than any of those applications that are generally overkill uh, if you're just doing, uh, say, videos for, for YouTube. The, the thing that's so fantastic about this app uh, is that like most other things on the iPad, it's so fast and responsive. So let me show you, for example, these are all different projects. Uh, and just notice how quick the load time is. Uh, and well, really, the thing is that, as I may have mentioned in part one of the uh, the part one video uh, for this this topic about the iPad, Generally on the iPad, there's no loading or saving, and that's the case in LumaFusion. When you're working with these projects, you don't have to save anything. Everything is always saved. Notice how fast everything just renders here. Um, and by the way, this opening sequence, including this little bit here with the transparency there that uses chroma keying and green screening, uh, by the way, let me just also go back to the app here and check. Okay, so the, all the other video files are in. I'm just going to pull out the SD card. Another mic now. Uh, so this, all of this opening sequence is created, uh, and in, you know, including this animated text, it's all done in LumaFusion. That's just a very simple example of the kinds of things you can do, but you can do some very sophisticated stuff, and it has transitions and uh, all the usual things that you'd expect, right? Titling and, and so forth. It's just a very high quality app that's got a great user experience, really easy to use, super responsive, and allows you to get stuff done. Uh, let me show you this video, for example, is a 20 minute video a 22 minute video. Let me show you how fast it can render this. This is, I'm gonna render this in 1080p. Uh, I'm just going to render it locally to the Photos app. And we won't uh, wait for the whole thing, but just look how fast it's doing that. It really is a great app. And uh, I hope you can see now why uh, when you see this and you see the workflow and the responsiveness, uh, the workflow for, for pulling photos into Lightroom and the responsiveness of Lightroom on the, on the iPad, generally I find that there's no waiting uh, on the iPad when I'm doing all of this photo and video editing work and most other computing tasks as well. It's just so responsive and whenever I go back to my computer, uh, like my iMac or my MacBook, I find them so slow by comparison. And it's a combination of the hardware as well as, as the apps. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post below and I'll do my very best to respond. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for